Hello guys and welcome back to Bear in Mind. This is Bear Hug, uh, my little show about wrestling. And as we are only three days away from WrestleMania, um, this is my WrestleMania predictions. Uh, so I'll go through as quickly as I can on this. Um, obviously there are currently 13 matches. I don't think, I don't think they're going to officially announce another one. Um, but I do think um, someone who was meant to have a WrestleMania match, um, Bobby Lashley, uh, but obviously didn't because of Bray Wyatt pulling out or uh, walking out. No one seems to actually really know. Um, Bobby Lashley currently isn't on the cards, um, but he is part of the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Um, I expect him or um, LA Knight to win that. Possibly one to screw the other maybe, um, which will then lead to something at WrestleMania. Um, I think it makes sense for those two to be the ones uh, because potentially they could have a nice little story going down the line, uh, fill in a few months. Obviously, LA Knight uh, could frame it as he's the one that ran Bray Wyatt off, um, as he's the one and only person to have a, a match with Bray Wyatt since Bray's return. Um, and... But obviously, there are other options here. We could see Bray Wyatt actually turn up. Who knows? Um, it could be that we see Uncle Howdy instead. Um, obviously, even with Uncle Howdy, there's questions over who could play Uncle Howdy. Um, we all think it was Bo Dallas. Um, in fact, it looked very likely that it was Bo Dallas. Uh, but obviously, with um, Bray Wyatt using the same finishing move as a certain... Um, Antipodean uh, wrestler who's now uh, a free agent and possibly looking to sign with WWE, um, who could fit the build of Uncle Howdy. Maybe uh, Jay White comes out dressed as Uncle Howdy and confronts Bobby Lashley or someone anyway, um, only to reveal. Uh, although I think if Jay White's going to debut, I think maybe the Raw after Mania makes a little bit more sense. Um, <clears throat> right, obviously The Miz is hosting, um, which is great, uh, he's, uh, I've spoken about him before on the channel, I love The Miz, many people love The Miz, naturally good on the mic, very entertaining, and obviously, um, extremely self-centred, um, the kind of character that, uh, uh, wants the show all to be about them, so perfect, uh, host, um, especially maybe if a certain Mr. Johnson turns up and steals his thunder, um, as he has done in a previous, uh, run in the company. Um, but let's get to some of the matches, uh, that are actually definitely announced. So we've got, uh, the Mysterios, uh, very good long-term build on this one. Um, obviously it all kicked off properly at Clash at the Castle, which I luckily went to go to. Uh, it happened to land on my 40th birthday, so of course I went there, um, with the in, um, infamous nut shot, um, Dominic kicking his dad in the balls. Um, the uh, various parties um, to do with this whole storyline uh, are in three different matches in WrestleMania. Obviously, we've got Dominic versus Ray, we've got Ray Ripley uh, versus Charlotte, who I'll talk about later on, and we've got Edge versus Finn Balor. Um, so I think... Uh, the um, that particular faction has done very well for pretty much everyone involved and uh, good storylines, good storytelling, long term, nice big payoff coming up hopefully. Um, sort of expect Dominic to win. Um, I can't see many shenanigans realistically. Um, I think it probably just a clean win, um, cleanish, maybe a little heel win, little. Not shot yet again, I think, possibly. But uh, I don't think we'll see any outside interference, definitely. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, so we got the men's WrestleMania showcase match. Um, so that is a four-team uh, tag team match. Um, I don't know if it's meant to be a an elimination match or whether it's meant to be just a four-team match. Um, one assumes that whoever wins this gets a shot at uh, at least one of the tag team titles. 
after WrestleMania. Uh, in it, we've got the relatively new team of Braun Strowman and Ricochet. Um, we've got um, Alpha Academy, um, the Viking Raiders, who are having a bit of a resurgence recently. And um, we have got the Street Profits. Um, I've mentioned, I think it was in my Elimination Chamber um, reactions video, that they've had to be very careful with the tag teams in recent times to put them on the back burner a little bit, to give them other stories to concentrate on, to not be necessarily running for that title, um, because... The Bloodline storyline is so hot and they needed the payoff for the tag team titles as well at WrestleMania. Um, so, obviously, this seems to be the seed for going forward. We've got a new tag team with Braun and um, Ricochet. I could see that continuing, to be honest, because at least in the time being, neither of those guys have anything else to do. So, but it will make a cer certainly an interesting dynamic for a tag team. Um, I can't see it being the Alpha Academy just with um, Otis f at least flirting uh, with becoming one of the maximum male models. Um, so I could see that team breaking up soon. Um, I'm not sure it's going to be the, the uh, Street Profits either. Similarly, at least one of them seems destined for singles uh, at some point in the year, depending on who wins certain matches and what have you. Um, so my money's sort of on the Viking Raiders on this one. Um, who else? What's next then? Uh, next uh, listed, at least, is the women's WrestleMania Showcase match. So same rules, uh, four teams. Uh, I still don't know whether it's a... Uh, it seems to just be a fatal four-way. Uh, it doesn't say whether it's elimination or not. Um, so we've got Liv Morgan and uh, Raquel Rodriguez. Um, we have Nat, uh, Natalia and Shotzi Blackheart. We've got Sonia Deville and che uh, Chelsea Green. Um, we've got Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler. Um, three of these seem to have been thrown together relatively recently. I know Liv and Raquel have tagged a few times. Um, realistically, I think you're probably looking at... Um, Shayna and Ronda Rousey getting this one. Um, again, the women's tag team division in particular just needs more tag teams because uh, at the moment it seems to be one permanent tag team and then a handful of things thrown together. Um, so that needs a hell of a lot of concentration there. Um, and I think we hopefully will see on... The Raw After Mania and in the coming months, a lot more women's tag teams from NXT uh, making the leap up. Um, I think I mentioned on my last NXT reactions um, that um, the, uh, the outgoing tag team champions there, they are fantastic. They should be de uh, debuting on the main roster soon. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go with uh, Ronda and Shayna, which means that so far, uh, I think I've got two heel teams winning. Um, so going on to match three, uh, at least listed match three. We all know that the first match uh, that's going to be uh, for the whole of WrestleMania, barring maybe uh, the pre-shows, because they will probably have at least one of these matches as warm-ups, um, unless they have some other things that they throw out. Uh, in the meantime, um, is going to be John Cena versus Austin Theory. I'll talk about that later on. Um, but next, banger after banger after banger after banger. Here we go. Triple threat intercontinental title match. Sheamus, Drew McIntyre, both going against Gunter for the intercontinental title. Um, Gunter, the long... Uh, second longest reigning ever intercontinental title holder i believe now um at least in one single run uh with only the honky tonk man above him now um has not lost since being on the main roster 
um, is looking tougher and tougher and tougher and tougher and tougher. Uh, if they are going to take it off him, I sort of maybe possibly see it in this match. Just because if he loses to two people, that's not that bad. It's not a tri it's not a two on one handicap match. Uh, obviously, um, it's a triple threat match. But um, in theory, he could not. He could potentially not even be in the um, uh, in the decision in this one. It could be that Sheamus beats Drew or Drew beats Sheamus. Uh, it'd be nice for Sheamus to get it because then he becomes the I think first and only Super Grand Slam champion who has held both world titles, obviously in various different guises. Uh, US title, IC title, tag team title, uh, King of the Ring winner, and Royal Rumble winner. Um, which means that, yeah, he'd be the only person to ever do that. The IC title is the only thing that's actually uh, eluded him. Um, no one else has done that. Um, people have done similar, but no one else has actually done that. Um, so it could be that. That would certainly make a good story. Uh, it means that Gunter doesn't look weak. Um, and he could go potentially after a babyface champion uh, if Cody Rhodes does actually indeed win. Um, so, yeah. I'm going to go with my heart on this, and I'm going to say Sheamus wins by beating Drew McIntyre. Um, next, Edge versus Finn Balor, Hell in a Cell. Um, Demon Balor. And Edge has uh, said that he'll bring his darkest side, uh, which seems to be the Brood uh, incarnation. As short-lived as the Brood was, I mean, it's not necessarily like it was a big part of uh, of Edge, of early Edge. Um, <clears throat> it lasted a reasonable while, but it relatively quickly um, changed. Um, I have seen rumours, and they are just rumours, that... Um, Maybe WWE are reaching out to uh, Tony Khan to borrow Christian for the night so that we can have, uh, and potentially, um, I think he's under contract with MLW currently, uh, to get Gangrel as well. Um, so we could actually see the brood turn up as a threesome in this, um, which would be interesting. Interesting. Um, we're getting Demon Balor. Uh, obviously, the first time we see heel Demon Balor in uh, WWE um, with uh, probably some purple through it this time, um, just given the uh, uh, current aesthetic um, that he and his uh, his group have. So I think, uh, I think yeah, we're going to... Realistically, I sort of hope Balor wins this. Um... Edge doesn't need to. I don't think it'll hurt either man to lose, but um, Edge doesn't really need to win this. So, yeah. Um, Bala, for me, I'm hoping. Um, not that there's actually as big of an age difference between the two of them, but like I think Bala's probably obviously got more time left in him um, than Edge. So, yeah, let's, let's see Bala. Um, Edge has apparently teased that um, he's put some crazy things forward. Hope they don't go too crazy. I'm not a big fan of the massive stunts because obviously one day something's going to go wrong. Um, let's just let's just have it be nasty. Like let's have them beat the living crap out of each other. Um, I will be fine with that. Um, but yeah, Finn Balor, my choice on that one. Uh, speaking of beating the living crap out of each other. Um, What's probably going to be the shortest match of the entirety of WrestleMania, um, but also the physically largest match, we've got Brock Lesnar versus Omos. And after this Monday night, that tiny little um, bit um, in the weigh-in of Brock attempting to take down Omos and then Omos managing to take down Brock with one kick, um, I'm actually rather excited for this. Brock looks well up for it. And when Brock's well up for it... Um, that usually is a good sign. Uh, he obviously famously is someone that when he isn't in the mood for something, the match can stink. Uh, but when he's well in the mood for it, you could have a classic on your hands. And of course, this is not going to be like, you know, Brett versus Shawn Ironman match. This is not going to be a technical masterpiece. Uh, but as far as 
two big lads absolutely pummeling each other. Um, this could be eight of the best minutes of wrestling in the last 20 years. Um, going back to Bobby Lashley, obviously there have been some teases of um, Bobby joining MVP back in the Hurt Business. But where there is the rest of the Hurt Business to um, to think about as well. Um, Brock is well into his 40s now so and again he doesn't really need to win um do we see omos winning after losing to bobby lashley last year i think we might yeah i'm gonna go for it big omos gets the big win um we've got next becky lynch lita and trish stratus Versus uh, Damage Control uh, in a six-person tag team match. Um, obviously, Becky Lynch and Lita are currently the tag team title holders. Um, I believe the title is not on the line in this. So, obviously, nothing should change hands there. And then, in theory, the tag team title holders um, will... If this story continues, potentially um, Damage Control get a return match against Lita and um, Becky. Um, if it doesn't, then obviously whoever wins that f uh, four women tag team match, uh, well, four team tag team match, probably gets the uh, the, the title match at the next uh, premium live event, uh, which is Backlash, I believe. Um been lots of rumours that maybe Trish goes rogue in this. Maybe Trish uh, turns on the other two. I could see that. Because um, that's potentially one way of making this story last a little longer. And we get, we then get uh, Becky and Lita um, against uh, Bailey and Trish for the tag team titles. Um, so yeah, I think I'm going to go with that. I think Trish turns... And I, I'm not sure where she costs them the match. I wonder if they win, but maybe by DQ. So we'll see. We'll see there. I'm going to go with Becky and Lita win after Trish turns and we get a disqualification. Uh, next up, uh, Raw Women's Championship match. <coughs> Bianca Belair versus Asuka. Um... They've had a decent build to this, probably not the build that everyone hoped. Um, I still think that realistically Asuka is uh, Bianca Belair's toughest opponent yet. Um, and hopefully there'll be a decent video package to build this on the night itself. Obviously the uh, commenta uh, commentary team will do a great job as well. Um, this could be a surprise banger of the weekend, I think. Um, if they have the time and it's the right match um, that suits them both and what have you... Um, yeah, this could be a surprise banger. Um, sort of leaning towards Bianca Belair retaining, um, but I think it's going to be very close. So yeah, we'll go with Bianca Belair retaining. Um, now, onto one of the options for main eventing Saturday night. So being the absolute headline of the Saturday night. Um, this is my choice for what I would like to see being the main event for Saturday night. It is the Usos defending both tag team titles um, against uh, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. <clears throat> uh, my reasoning for this, um, obviously not that a women's match isn't worthy of being main event. Of course it is. We've had a couple of absolute banging uh, women's main events uh, in, in the past. Um, however, we have not had a tag team match main event a wrestlemania since wrestlemania one um when hulk hogan and mr t were against roddy piper and um uh mr uh, paul Ondorf, i believe with um um uh bob orton in the corner um and even then it wasn't for the tag team titles it was just a tag team match with a guest celebrity um, it would be great to finally see a tag team match in a company that is notorious for not necessarily giving tag team wrestling its due. Um, the big 
the big match. And I think given the storyline, given everything that's going on, um, and especially if Roman is going to retain on Sunday, this is the match to headline Saturday. Because if Sammy and Kevin are going to win this match, then at least you get the big happy ending for this one, even if Roman just just clings on on the uh, on the Sunday. Um, so I'm going to go with Kevin and Sammy, um, get the titles and ideally as the headline match of the night, um, moving on to the next option for the headline match of the night. Um, that is the SmackDown women's uh, title, um, Charlotte Flair and Ray Ripley. Um, <clears throat> A much, much better build for this uh, than the other women's title match. Um, much more history between these two women. Obviously, they had um, a match at WrestleMania in uh, 2020. So the first of the um, empty WrestleManias. In fact, was it the only empty WrestleMania? Um, yeah, it was the only one because they managed to uh, do it the following year, didn't they? Um and that arguably was match of the weekend. That was arguably the best match. Um, so justifiably so, this could be the headliner, the main event, the one to close Saturday night. Um, I think everything's leaning towards Ray Ripley. Um, she is obviously the future. Not that Charlotte is is over the hill or anything like that. Um, but they obviously have in mind to try and get Charlotte to the 16 world title, or if not more, before she does t uh, decide to retire, um, or even just decides to go off and have a family, um, which uh, you know, will take her away for a minimum period of time, uh, and she might not decide to come back, which you know is perfectly fine. Um, or she might decide to do what Trish has done and taken a long time off, and then come back and do some bits and bobs here and there. Um, so it's, I think it's the right time for Rhea Ripley. She will shine, um, and they're going to put an incredible match on. Um, I think they, if they are going to headline, I think Sammy and KO versus the Usos actually has to open night two. Because if Sammy and KO go on before this match, um, the crowd will be knackered. The crowd will be wiped out. And that main event, as much as this is going to be an incredible match, I think the energy stream just won't be there. Um, I felt that in Cardiff myself um, when it was, uh, I think, Liv Morgan versus Shayna Baszler for the, um, uh, the women's title at the time. Uh, came unfortunately for them came on immediately after Gunter versus Sheamus and we were beaten after that match because it was incredible what an incredible match and we were shouting and screaming the entire 60,000 or however many there were there um, for the entire time and it, t it as an audience it takes a while to get that energy back again to then put all of your energy back into another match it is, it's surprisingly mentally and physically draining uh, when wrestling is as good as it currently has been um, to be a fan consistently. I think that's where they need to time things perfectly this weekend. Because um, actually, there's a load of good matches. There's a load of good matches. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go with Rhea Ripley there. So uh, speaking of uh, a good match, um, Seth freaking Rollins versus Logan Paul. Can't stand Logan Paul the person. Um, but as far as a celebrity who's come into wrestling and even is doing just the part-time gimmick, this guy's incredible. And he seems to listen, uh, which is even better. Um, so he'll do what he's told. He'll do what needs to be done. Um, and against Seth Rollins, arguably, I mean, when he's on form, one of the best in the world, if need, if not the best in the world currently. So the two of them could make magic. This could be the match. Like, um, as far as Brock and Omos being the spectacle match, 
of the weekend of just pure brutality for what eight minutes or whatever it's going to be this could be the technical masterpiece um surely seth wins unless they're going to keep seth as a heel although in this like i mean he's sort of turning back baby face anyway so yeah i'm gonna go with seth seth wins that one uh now to the opening match of the entirety of wrestlemania this year um austin theory versus john cena for the united states championship um in many ways mirror images austin theory even actually has a similar physique to john cena when he was young when he was the um uh, ruthless aggression first um like the prototype john cena that came out with to challenge kurt angle um this could be a sneakily good match as well um I don't expect it to like steal the show, but as a as a start match, as a like a little kind of to get the crowd going, um, ten fifteen minutes of that should be spot on. Um, I would like to see Cena win. Um, my own idea would be Theory wins it back at Backlash. And then we have the rubber match at SummerSlam where Theory solidifies um, his legacy, I suppose, by beating John Cena one more time. Cena loses all the time at SummerSlam, so it would be no like um, blemish on his uh, um, <clears throat> SummerSlam uh, win-loss records there, really. Uh, so I think that's how I would do it. However, um, very likely Bron Breaker, uh, the current NXT uh, title holder, will be losing to uh, Carmelo Hayes on Saturday um, at Standard Deliver. Uh, I won't be doing predictions for that, but I will do reactions. Um, and I have seen someone uh, suggest maybe um, that Bron Breaker debuts on Monday um, and takes out the winner of one of these. Uh, the person I saw suggest it actually said Cena. Um, and that would be one hell of a debut for Bron Breaker on Monday if he does, if Cena wins this and then Bron Breaker comes in and flattens Cena. Um, that would be rather good. Um, I'm still going to go with Cena. Uh, as to what happens afterwards, I don't know. Um, and now the main event of the entire weekend, the undisputed WWE Universal Championship. Roman Reigns, uh, over two and a half years undefeated, um, with the longest reign in modern history. <clears throat> um, not far from getting a thousand days, not far from beating Pedro Morales, taking on Cody Rhodes. Now, it does feel like it's destined for Cody. And without some sort of shenanigan, if it doesn't go to Cody, this is going to feel very, very, very Lex Luger 1993, Lex Express, heading towards SummerSlam. Um, I still want those belts split. I still want Roman to keep the undisputed. And I actually would rather like Cody to get the WWE title, um, so the black belt currently. Um, I don't know how they do it. Um, I, I know it would leave it a little flat at the end of WrestleMania. And it would be very, very, very Lex Express, SummerSlam versus Yokozuna, 1993. Does Cody get the count out victory against Roman? Which would then lead to a rematch at Backlash <clears throat> where potentially, I think that would see Roman over the thousand day mark. That's when Cody gets the title or a title. Again, like as daft as it sounds, he's not that far from Pedro. If he gets to next WrestleMania, so WrestleMania 40, the big one, which obviously he's still going to be the top dog. He's going to be the number one. Uh, no matter who has any of the titles, Roman is going to be number one. And if they can get Rock for next WrestleMania as well, and it's going to be Rock versus Roman, 
that doesn't need to be for a title, but if Roman's got that title and he at that point will have beaten Bruno Sammartino's shortest run, short, <clears throat> then you've got a real, real legacy there. And even, I know it's a bit of a stretch, if he makes it to next year's SummerSlam, so SummerSlam 2024, he actually beats Hulk Hogan. Which means that only Bruno's longest reign and Bob Backlund will be ahead of him. And he's never going to touch those two. Never. But I do think it's actually within reach. I do think they might, might, might be tempted. As long as Roman's fit and healthy and he still wants to do it. And he doesn't get bored, obviously. Um, try and get him all the way to beating Hogan. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. It's outlandish, but I'm going to go for it. I'm going to say Cody Rhodes wins the match, but doesn't win the title. Um, it could be because of interference, maybe from The Rock, maybe from someone. Um, but I don't think Cody leaves with the title. I think he wins, but via counter or disqualification. So, quickly run down who I've chosen. I'm going to go... Uh, Top to bottom this time. So we're going to go with Cody winning, but not for the title. I'm going to go for John Cena winning. Uh, we're going to go with Seth Rollins over Logan Paul. Ray Ripley over Charlotte. Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens over the Usos. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, Bianca Belair to retain against Asuka. Uh, we'll have Becky and Lita uh, win, but... Possibly because of disqualification, uh, because Trish turns on them. I'm going to go with the giant Omos beats Brock Lesnar. Finn Balor beats um, uh, Edge in the Hell in a Cell. Sheamus will win the Intercontinental title by beating uh, Drew McIntyre. Uh, Gunter will not be involved in the uh, decision. Uh Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler uh, will win the four tag team women's match. And the Viking Raiders will win the four men's tag team match. Dominic Mysterio will beat his dad. And that is it. Uh, as I say, I'll do reactions for both nights of these. Probably separate shows, actually, just because it's going to be quite long. And um, I'll do an NXT Standard Eleven. Um, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all soon. Bye. Yeah!